the bigger cost was going to be to Aiken. What he didn't realize that just breaking that unity is that he was going to lose his life. But not only is he going to lose his life, he's going to let, allow the life of his wife to be lost. Not only his wife, but now his fun, two, three, four, his brother, his, his daughter, his, his sons. And then his grandchildren are there innocently, beautiful faces and their little eyes looking up at their great-grandfather, their grandfather, their father. And they were looking at Achan. And they could hear Joshua. And then something was like Joshua was looking in tears and welled up in his eyes as they stood there. And they knew that he was hearing something in his head. And it was God speaking to him. And you can imagine Joshua standing there and he said, Lord, I will take the punishment. We, where is we? And God says, no, you are to take the whole family his animals, the Bible says, all his animals, his livestock, his cats, his, his little canaries, and everything, everything, the shovels and the wheelbarrow, and all that stuff was to be put up together. And he says, right, get all the people, because this will be forever and a day a sign that you cannot play with fire. The enemy is after your agreement. This was so important that the whole nation for generations would have lost their blessings. And so they had to stone them. This is quite terrible. It's, I mean, it's not the joyful message. I guess some of you probably would have walked away by now. But that's in the Word of God. And it's there. And they were stoned. They had to put them in a heap. They burnt them and put stones over them as a memorial, God said, forever and a day. When you swing out there and say, I'm doing my own thing, I don't have to really ride all the way. And if there's a, there's a voice that comes and, or oh, this is the agreement of the whole group and I just can't turn up and I can't be there. You know how serious this stuff is? And you might be saying, oh, come on, Bishop. I mean, we're in the New Testament now and God just speaks to us all and we, can, we just flow with what he's doing with me. No, it doesn't. Acts chapter 4 says, that when they came together as one heart, one soul. Now the word heart is a different, the word one for heart and one soul. In the Hebrew, I looked up this word one, and I noticed that it, this is the only place where it was different for the one soul and one heart. So the Greek word, I should say, for, for one heart was talking about a unanimous decision. They were all in agreement with the mission, they were all in agreement with the vision. They were all in agreement together about being connected, and this is what our purpose is. That that was one thing, but it was the was the one and soul. I'm talking about in verse Acts chapter uh, four, verse 32, 33, 34. Look at that. It says they're of one heart. So we got that. It's talking about the the actual fact of being agreement in mind. And unanimous about that. But the one soul, the Greek word changed, I noticed it. I was suspicious of it and I looked it up in the Greek and I found it when I went to one. And then it had one um, one mind, and uh, one heart, I should say, and one in soul. Those are the two, just trying to keep it in memory. So when he went to one soul, it, was, it changed. That, that Greek word for one there changed. It was the only one. It changed. This and I, I as quickly went through and found the reference, and it meant first. So the word soul was first. And then when I saw the sub-attachments to that in Greek, it was basically saying that this person's soul, which represents their life, it wasn't a spiritual thing. The soul is talking about the life of a person, not the spiritual worship and connection of a person. The soul was their life in, in the world. It was like the work life. It was their income. and It was their treasures. It was their possessions. It was the soul, the desires, and the dreams of that person, the gifts and talents of a person. So what I was saying is, the first meant that the soul was first given to another person. So their life wasn't their own. They gave their life not just to the mission and the vision. That's how far most of the church goes. And a lot of the church general can't even have an agreeable vision. So everybody has their own mission. You hear that? 
You can have your own mission assignments, but within the one vision. I don't believe God gives a lots of visions of big missions to all Christians. Otherwise, we'd be all so disunified, which a lot are, because in some places, people believe in their own personal pursuit of their call. But they're not joined together with many others for the big mission or the big vision or assignment of that group of people, which now comes to this last point that's very critical because in the middle of it all was the apostles. Do you notice it refers to the apostles in the middle who were together and had great power and then they had great grace was on all the people because of the apostolic voice. Now twice it mentions them all coming into a collective power of anointing released possessions, released resources. You notice that? So there it is. Within the big collective corporate body, they had all that they needed to help each other get their houses, get their futures, get their possessions. That's what it did. So this incredible unified agreement in this corporate body brought about a huge manifestation in the city.